If you've been trying to learn JavaScript and it feels like you're starting over every few months, just stop. You're not failing because coding is too hard. You're failing because the way that you're learning was never really designed for adults to learn in the first place. Now, over the last 10 years, I've taught hundreds of career changers, not just how to code, but how to successfully transition into a career in tech, people in their 30s, 40s, even 50s. And I've honestly seen this same pattern every single time. You watch a tutorial, you follow along, you watch, and then you type what they type. Maybe you even build a small project, but the second you turn the tutorial off, you get this really frustrating moment when you basically just don't know how to code anything on your own. I've been in this exact same position myself. It is super frustrating. In fact, I even read an entire book one summer on HTML. Please don't judge me too hard. This was a long time ago. And then I sat down to code at my computer and realized I had no freaking clue what to do. Here's a pretty uncomfortable truth that a lot of boot camps and coding tutorials don't really ever address. Every month that you stay stuck in the cycle of learning and forgetting and learning again, the opportunity window shrinks just a little bit more. Whether we like it or not, AI is changing the industry and the barrier to entry is rising for people looking to get into that first role. The longer you take to build real skills, or if you're not actually building those real skills, you're just making your path to entry that much more difficult. Now, I'm not saying this to scare you. I think there's enough doom and gloom out there already. There is a right path that you can follow, one that I've done myself and one we teach at Parsity that I wanna share with you. I'm Brian, I'm a senior software engineer. I still write production code every single week. I'm not just some talking head on YouTube or LinkedIn. I also run a small coding bootcamp, don't hate me too much, called Parsity, where we work with around 30 people per year who want to change their careers into tech. What I'm gonna share with you isn't some theory, this is just practical stuff that works. It's not simple, it's not easy, but it will be effective. Today, I'm gonna to show you the exact system I'd use to learn JavaScript if I was starting over in 2026. Step one, kill the tutorial addiction. Tutorials are a seductive trap, and honestly, they do have a place when it comes to your learning, but too many people use them like this. They watch the video, they type the code, stuff works on their screen, and then they just move on to the next thing. You're not learning to code if you're doing this, you're just learning how to be a glorified typist in my opinion. The moment you close the video down and you sit at your code editor and try to write something from scratch, you freeze up. It's like your brain stops working. Or even worse, maybe you just plug in that same question into ChatGPT or Claude or one of these AI agents out there and they construct code for you that you have no clue how it works under the hood. We're in a very unique time now where coding tutorials mixed with AI can have people stuck at the beginner level for months even when it feels like they're making a lot of progress. Now, tutorials aren't bad, right? It's just the way that you're using them might not be effective. Here's the way I like to use them and how I still use them now when I wanna learn something. I watch just enough of the tutorial to get me started so I can understand some basic concepts and take me from zero to somewhat effective within this language or framework or whatever concept I'm trying to learn. Then I will pause the tutorial and I'll either break, rewrite, or extend the functionality that we're doing, that we're attempting to create. For example, if I'm doing a tutorial on how to create a basic web page, I'm not gonna follow exactly what the tutorial is doing. I'm gonna go off and do something on my own. Maybe they want to write an about section. Maybe I'm like, what if I wanted to have an image? What if I wanted to break apart this page? What if I wanted to see what it looked like in mobile view? How would I do that? This can naturally lead you down some interesting paths and teach you naturally and also show you how to take off the training wheels and really make a project your own. So it's no problem following the tutorial, but at some point you need to push pause go off and do your own thing and then come back and then extend your knowledge, recreate, rewrite, extend and break stuff. And then you keep using that pattern to naturally learn and really make good use out of the tutorial. And I should mention, there's no gold star for finishing a tutorial. No one cares if you finish the tutorial, just that you learn something from it. I have a lot of tutorials that I've never finished and I have no intention of finishing. They taught me a ton. Your brain needs to struggle a little bit to create those deep grooves and actually internalize the stuff that you're learning. Otherwise, it's just superficial and shallow knowledge. I learned this the hard way. Earlier in my career, a coworker told me at a really small startup straight up, he said, you don't actually know the fundamentals of JavaScript and it makes it difficult to work with you. Now this really stung to hear and it was very embarrassing, but he was right. I skipped the fundamentals and it was costing me years into my career. Speaking of fundamentals, step two, learn the freaking fundamentals properly. Now this might seem obvious, but most beginners I noticed just wanna rush through the basics and get to the cool stuff like React or AI, machine learning, Python, some other cool language or framework that they've 
heard about that they're supposed to know that they don't want to miss out on. This is a bad idea. If you don't understand how JavaScript actually works, variables, functions, array methods, objects, loose conditionals, this binding, context, async, await, you're just building a house on a really shaky foundation. Frameworks come and go. And even though we have some frameworks which are really, really popular, under the hood, they're just JavaScript. Knowing the fundamentals and knowing the language, really understanding your primary language, whether that's JavaScript in this case or Python, is how you build your house on a solid foundation. And this is not only helpful for interviews where you'll be grilled on some of these fundamentals, but will help you to debug and investigate complex issues that will happen and take you from a framework developer into a software developer. It's the difference between somebody who knows how to drive a car versus somebody who knows how to work on the car. And here's what I would literally aim to be able to build with vanilla JavaScript before I even consider going into a framework like React or Angular or Vue or whatever. If you can build a small form with some input fields that has some sort of validation, meaning a person can't submit it if the first name is blank or the last name is blank, and when they hit submit, it actually transmits this data to a third-party API. I'll have a link in the show notes for this project that you can try to build on your own. This is a great litmus test. If you can build this thing from scratch with vanilla JavaScript and HTML and CSS, you're ready to move on to React. If you can't, this could be an indication that you need to spend a little more time on these fundamentals before moving forward. I know this is not sexy stuff, but in general, if you aim to know the fundamentals of the frameworks you're using, of the language, of systems, you're going to have a much longer, healthier career than somebody who's always learning at the very top of the surface. Now, step three, and this one is kind of a weird one. Use what I call button-driven development. This is going to help you extend your knowledge and help you think of little cool challenges which are going to be just outside of your depth to keep you learning naturally. If you rely on tutorials, you're basically giving over your learning path to somebody else. You can go on YouTube videos and you can find somebody that says, you need to know this or this or that. Button-driven development goes like this, and this is exactly what I did and what I still do when I want to internalize a concept in JavaScript or any other program, and this is exactly what I do when I want to learn about a concept in JavaScript. I will literally create a button on the screen, and I will think, what's going to happen when this button is clicked? I want something to happen. This is where your ingenuity slash creativity needs to really come through. If you're always looking for somebody to give you the next piece of information or the next challenge, you're not going to learn at the pace which you should be. So create a button. If you learned about arrays or objects or you want to learn how APIs work, think, how would I make this happen? I want to click a button and then something happens. What is that something? It could be literally anything. Maybe you want to submit a form. Maybe you want to make the button change colors. Maybe you want to move the button across the screen. Maybe you want to have the button change to a random color. Think of something that you want to achieve or think about a concept that you don't quite understand, like maybe promises or this or whatever, map, filter, reduce, common things that beginners get stuck on. And think, how can you make a practical example that might include a button to trigger this action? Most of what you do on the web is a button and a form. If you think about Instagram, Twitter, Tinder, whatever, these are all just forms. You enter in some information and then you press submit, or you enter in a comment and you press submit to add that comment to a picture, or you post a thirst trap on Instagram and you hope people like it. This is all forms and buttons. The more you can optimize for button-driven development, the faster you're gonna learn practical ways that the web actually works. These aren't projects that ever need to see the light of day. The only criteria for these projects is that you learn something. I use sites like CodePen or StackBlitz to quickly scaffold something that just looks ugly that will teach me some concept that I might be struggling with, and I suggest you do the same thing. Step four, get feedback from somebody who actually knows what they're doing. This is the part that nobody really wants to hear or even really consider. Learning alone doesn't really work, especially not for adults. If you're a student at a college, which is where most software developers have gone, they got feedback from professors, from other students, from people in the industry that know what they're doing. In general, they got some sort of indication that what they wrote is either good or bad and why. Without feedback, you might write things that work but don't quite match industry standards or expectations. You can develop pretty bad habits that you don't even notice. Your code could look quote unquote Amateur. This could be anything from the indentation that you're using to the naming of variables to other just basic conventions that most professional software developers take for granted but are immediately clear when you look at somebody who went down the self-taught route or maybe went to one of those coding boot camps that really didn't teach them much or give them any feedback from somebody who's actually been in the field. So you're probably thinking, well, how do I get feedback? I don't even know any software developers. You could find a mentor, which is kind of difficult because who's really going to want to reach out and give you some help? You could go on a site like Code 
code mentor.io and pay somebody to give you that help or just to review your code. So either you can find a really kind stranger and hope that they actually give you some good advice or you can pay for that advice. Another option is to go to places like meetups or even post your code online. <laughs> if you post bad code online, this is gonna hurt your feelings, but you're gonna get a lot of feedback and a lot of opinions. All opinions are not created equally, so it's difficult to find the right mentor. Ideally, somebody that is senior, that is in a position that you want to be in, that you also like and respect. This is easier said than done. Pair programming with somebody slightly ahead of you is a real cheat code. This means literally sitting on the computer, it could be over Zoom or Google Meet or something like that, sharing a screen and typing the code. You could even just watch how they attack a problem. This is like the cheat code to level up really, really fast. I had the benefit of working at a really small startup where I pair programmed with a super duper smart developer for like nine months. That took me from a bumbling junior developer to learning how to write tests to take me up to a senior level by the time I left that company. I learned more in nine months pair programming with that one guy than I had learned in the previous two years at another company. Again, this is probably the most difficult thing that you're gonna need to do, but it, but it's also the most impactful. And lastly, step five, you need a system. Systems beat motivation. I don't mean to get too fluffy here, but consistency will always beat intensity. Now here's a little bit of science that most people don't take into account. Your brain builds neural pathways in as little as a few focus minutes per day. But without structure, accountability, feedback, these pathways weaken just as quickly as they were created. This is why most new developers, people learning to code, get stuck in this really vicious hamster wheel. I once met a dude that I was working with at this coding bootcamp who literally would be learning for loops every single time we met up. And I thought, how is this possible? Here he is eight hours a day on Saturday in this room studying his ass off, but he can't seem to get past four loops. I said, hey, what are you doing during the rest of the week? And he said, oh, nothing. I have way too much stuff going on. I have like three jobs and all these other obligations and things like that. And I just don't have time. So he was basically learning everything on Saturday, forgetting it through the week and then coming back and redoing the same thing. That is not a way to learn, and it's super frustrating because you're putting in the work, you're just not seeing the results. Now, here's how you fix it. Everybody says be consistent, but no one ever really says how. People think consistency is like one hour a day, four hours a day, 10 minutes per day. Just keep the habit alive. That is the most important thing. Make it inevitable, make it easy, make the habit fit into your life, not the other way around. If you're a morning person, use that time in the morning. Set your alarm for 10, 15, 30 minutes earlier. The night before, have a notebook, write down what you're going to do so that way in the morning you know exactly what to do don't aim for perfect just aim for consistency literally if you only have five minutes do something in that five minutes have your hands on the keyboard writing some code read about it on your commute listen to podcasts if you need to just keep the momentum going because if not you're going to wait for that perfect time and as we all know for busy adults that time does not exist now at this point you might be thinking okay cool that all sounds great but how do i actually start doing this how do i get the feedback the accountability is there a system that i can use and at partially we do have a program called dev 30 where we've taught hundreds of people this exact same process along with accountability and daily small tasks tasks that are going to level up and take them from zero into a solid foundation with JavaScript. If you're serious about breaking into tech in 2026, this is a great starting point. Now to sweeten the deal, we're having a promotion for people who are subscribers to this channel. You can click the link in the description or the first pinned comment on this video to learn more. We made this offer as a thank you to people that subscribe to this channel or just found this video and like what I'm saying because you're likely the kind of person that we want to work with. And I'll just keep it super real with you. This program is not for everybody. Coding is not for everyone. If you're looking for a get rich quick scheme, this isn't it. If you want somebody to hold your hand and tell you exactly what to do and how to type every single letter and character into your code editor. This just isn't for you. But if you're a busy adult who needs a proven system and you actually want to do the work, then you're the exact kind of person we want to work with. Thanks again for watching and I hope you found that helpful and I'll see you around.